This is the Six Man Show, an Orlando Magic podcast, with your hosts, Kevin Tucker and Jonathan Osborne, covering all things Magic basketball. By fans, for fans. Go Magic! What's going on, Orlando Magic fans? You guys are back with the Six Man Show. Today is August 8th, 2024. Jonathan Osborne here with my co-host, Kevin Tucker. Kevin, what is going on? Jonathan, great to be back. You and I both have endured a lot of rainfall, as I'm sure many of our listeners have. I'm still in it. Betty is, not Betty, Debbie is still hanging around. Still hanging around up here in South Georgia. It's been literally raining for like 72 straight hours. Streets are flooded. Whole neighborhoods are flooded. It's kind of crazy. But still got power. I lost for a little bit, but you know that part's good. I was able to get in my neighborhood. You know, my little Ford Focus almost almost didn't make it, but we got through. But yeah, no, things are good. Uh, a lot of fun things happening. Obviously, Germany going on. We'll talk about that. But our conversation with Kendra Douglas later was awesome. So definitely stick around for that. It, it was really good. Yes, it was. Was going to bring that up. Make sure that you guys stick around for that conversation. Again, a big thank you to Kendra for joining the show. Always fun to talk to her. Um, and excited to to see Kendra in in year two on the the sidelines for Bali. So, like you mentioned, Germany took care of Greece in the Olympic semifinal. When was that? That was Tuesday, Tuesday yeah. at five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Definitely did not miss getting up that early for these international games. And I posted about that, and I got plenty of responses from our, our counterparts and you know all across the world saying. Welcome to our world. This is what we deal with on a regular basis. I've always tried to give credit to international Magic fans that stay up until 1 or 2 a.m. or get up at 4 a.m. to watch these games because I could never do that on a regular basis. And then I made the mistake of going back to bed when that game wrapped up around 7 a.m. I didn't have to be up for work until about 8. So I went back to sleep and that basically ruined my entire day yesterday. But Again, Germany takes care of Greece 76 to 63. Again, a really impressive performance from Franz Wagner leading the way for Germany with 18 points, shot 8 of 17 from the floor, 7 of 11 from 2, 1 of 6 from 3, good for 17%. But that that's that step back 3 mm. was a big one from Franz and he also added three rebounds, two assists and then Dennis Schroeder 13 points, 5 of 12 from the floor, adding in some some big minutes for uh, Germany. And then Isaac Bonga and Johannes Thiemann also make big contributions uh, for Germany in this game. And Germany did a good job against Greece. They limited Giannis and Tedekumpo to 22 points, 9 of 14 from the floor. Greece goes as Giannis goes. And I think he was averaging something crazy like you know, 20, 25 shot attempts per game. And Germany's defensive strategy against Greece was basically, we're going to make anybody other than Giannis beat us. And in the first half of that game, guys like, you know, Thomas Walkup and Kostas Papa Nicolau were knocking down shots. But when the stops, the shots stopped falling in the second half, that's when uh, Germany, who actually uh, trailed for the most of the first half, they were just able to take control in that second half and win pretty comfortably again 76 to 63 germany now moves on to the quarterfinal no now that they beat greece in the quarterfinal now they move on to the semifinal where they will face off against france who they just put the beat down on uh you know a little over a week ago and now we get a rematch kevin but what were your thoughts of uh I know you got up a, a little, not right at five, oh, but a, unashamedly, a few minutes, a few unashamedly, minutes game, intentionally, but. unashamedly and intentionally skipped the first half. I was not getting up at five for that game. Now, semifinals and on, if they're at five, I know they're not, but if they were, I would have gotten up. But I, I was not concerned about Germany against Greece. What I will say is, as you mentioned, their game before against France, a, a dominant performance, right? This was an uglier game. Like you mentioned, they trailed for a large portion of this game. And at some levels, you're like, oh, man, you know, maybe it wasn't the best performance. But at the, on the other end of things, like good teams find a way to win. Right. And, you know, they found a way to win by the end of the game. They certainly look like the more dominant side, like the, that fourth quarter, especially. I mean, they just took over like it was really impressive. I think this Germany team is really, really locked in more so than I think maybe even I expected. Um, not that I didn't think they could be four or no or anything like that, but. 
it's been a pretty comfortable 4-0. Again, three quarters of this game wasn't comfortable, but by the end of the fourth quarter, you know, it was different. So I, they're locked in. They're playing France. Rematch. They already whooped them earlier. Now, will that bode in their favor? I don't know. But you, you got to feel really good about where they are. I think the biggest thing for me with them, it's it's the same thing people talk about the United States. Obviously, it's a totally different thing with them, but depth, right? Like, Germany has elite depth. You know, the USA has the most, right? But outside of them, Germany's depth is as good as there is. And I mean, you saw this especially in this Greece game, like the second unit for Greece. I mean, yeah, not great. I think, let's see, eight, yeah, eight points off the bench for Greece, whereas Germany had, what is that, 35, 35 points off the bench. And so I think the depth has really helped this team. I think it'll help them against France. Now, again, I've said it on the last episode, I'm still just drooling. Give me a Germany USA gold medal game. I can't, I cannot wait. I just hope. I just hope they can beat France. I don't expect the United States to struggle with Serbia, but if those stars align, Franz and Mo against the United States for the gold, sign me the heck up. I am already fired up just thinking about it. Well, when they played, as we're recording this Wednesday, uh, it was five days ago. Germany uh, played France in in their second, um, or no, that was their final group stage game they won 85 to 71 obviously you remember the the bronze Wagner dunks over Wemby and then over basically the entire French team but Franz had 26 points in that game so did Dennis Schroeder uh what was it Wemby had 14 in that game Rudy Gobert had four seems like Rudy Gobert may be dealing with some type of injury who knows Evan Fournier had 10 points in that game Bilal Koulibaly had one point so it wasn't France's best performance, but like really the way that Germany has looked the last two summers has just really been dominant. I think uh, I saw a stat that going back to last year's FIBA World Cup run, they're like 12-0 and 0 in their last 12 games, like 12 official games at least, not counting friendly. So uh, I think right now, the last I checked, Germany was favored by like five and a half points over France, which is going to be played at 1130 on Thursday as you are listening to this. So be sure to check in uh, and check out that game. But really looking forward to that. Franz continues to look really solid. At the beginning of the broadcast, they were talking about how he's turning 23 in a few weeks. I'm like, this kid is still only 22 years old. And he's just really just incredible. Like, yes, Dennis Schroeder is a big part of what that Germany team does. But Germany seems to be at their best when Franz is featured in the offense a ton and the ball is really moving around. When you're watching this Germany team and you see the offense sort of stall and get really cold, it's typically because there's a lot of Dennis Schroeder time going on. So I I like Germany's chances against France. And then I'm right there with you. Germany took care of USA last year. Was it in the semifinal? I, I don't remember if it was the semifinal or when that was in the World Cup last year. But that was not this, you know, I don't even know what they're referring the the Avengers, you know, squad of, of Team USA that we're seeing now. But in, in these one game tournaments, this, you know, international environment where, you know, there's a, a ton of experience on this Germany side, I'm not counting them out. Right now, I think we just checked some of the sports books before we started recording this. Germany is still like plus 800 to win this entire tournament. And which it's kind of crazy because they do have the second best odds and the U S is like minus 700 and yeah, they had the U S has barely been challenged at all uh, during this, this cycle. But the one challenge that they did have was against Germany in in their last friendly before the Olympics. So if any team can get it done, it's going to be this Germany team. Yeah. And what also I think just adds fuel to this fire. Like you said, this is a totally different USA team, but like, the World Cup, us, you know, people that know ball, you know, we're tuned into that. This is the Olympics. Like, this is a whole different audience that will have their eyes on this gold medal game, especially assuming the United States makes it. That, again, adds a whole different level of eyes. Like, people just want to watch LeBron and KD and blah, blah, blah. And everyone wants to see them cruise to a gold medal. But just look out. If, it, if Germany's there, now look, there's a chance. First off, there's a chance Germany loses to France. Let's make that very clear. France has enough talent to beat just about any team in the world that could totally happen but if germany does move on there's a chance that the united states beats them by 30 they have the the talent to do that they could be anybody by 30 
but they better not sleep. They better not sleep on the Germany team. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Um, what, one, you, thing, just, one thing that I want to talk about that you may not want to talk about, and a lot of people don't want to hear me talk about, but in France versus Canada yesterday, oh, yeah. Tuesday, Evan Fournier, all right, mm -hmm. with 15 points off the bench, had I think like the last seven points, I believe it was, for France on their way to secure the 82 to 73 win over, over Canada. Any argument that I have ever heard against Evan Fournier as to, you know, why he wasn't good or why he wasn't this, why he wasn't that, it's never Evan Fournier's fault. So I just wanted to bring this up one more time. I know people mm -hmm. are going to be mad about this. Evan Fournier always was good, always has been good, and still might be good. I know he's not on an NBA roster right now, but against basically an NBA roster in Canada, had a, a big game off the bench for France. So anytime I'm going to, you know, just throw my little two cents in there about Evan Fournier, I will do that because, again, every argument that I ever get has nothing to do with Evan Fournier. So just I wanted to say my two cents. Yeah. You know, if people have been listening to this show for any amount of time, they've heard you, you know, share that. And I, I don't think it's totally unfounded. Um, but yeah, I will say he had 15 points. I would say that three of those points were an absolute miracle. <laughs> because I mean, he, okay. <laughs> three of those That's were fair. pretty lucky. <laughs> yeah. So if you, if you missed it, Evan Fournier had an absolute heave at the end of the shot clock. Uh, I mean, this was like in the final seconds of that game that basically yeah, put the Wemby game away. Wemby put him in like the worst spot imaginable Awful. with Terrible. that pass at the end of the shot clock. Yeah. It yes. was from like 30, almost maybe 35, 40 feet. Horrible angle. And he like, drained it. Drained it. And uh, it was an electric moment. Maybe it wasn't luck, but it was something. I don't know if it, it was wasn't skill, not. But, there, yeah, there's a non-zero chance that there was some luck involved. Yeah, there's a little bit of that involved. But anyway, yes, he did play well. Credit to him. Um, to some people that might be like a, a hot take, you know, other people might understand that, you know, Evan Fournier was put in some tough positions here in Orlando. But speaking of heat, Jonathan, there's been something that we haven't discussed on this show in almost two months. It's been a while and it's hot. It's jam hot chicken folks. So many of you have mentioned in our, in our, you know, social media and stuff that you miss jam hot chicken. Well, jam hot chicken is back in partnership with the six man show. We are so fired up for the heat of jam hot chicken to be back with us. If you're not familiar, jam hot chicken is a Nashville and LA inspired hot chicken shack located in winter park at 400 West new England Avenue, suite 13 in Hannibal square. Jonathan swears by them. I swear by them. They're amazing. You should check them out. First off, you can follow them at jam hot chicken on all social media. And we got big news with jam hot chicken, Jonathan. Jam Hot Chicken is now available on Uber Eats for local delivery. So, yeah, check them out if you're kind of in that Winter Park area. I don't know how far that range is, but check your Uber Eats and see if you can get Jam Hot Chicken on there. Jam Hot Chicken also ranked number four in Yelp's top Florida restaurants of 2023. They're bringing jams, culture, and hot chicken to the heart of Winter Park. We love Jam Hot Chicken. We promise you will do. You will, too. So check them out at Jam Hot Chicken and let them know that the Six Man Show sent you. Yeah, I'm just really happy that we were able to keep the partnership going. We've had some questions over the course of the last few months, like, what's going on? Are you guys not with Jam Hot Chicken anymore? What's going on? Blah, blah, blah. And yeah, just really happy to continue that partnership. I I don't think us or Andrew over at Jam Hot, when we decided to like enter into this partnership a little over a year ago, I don't know that any of us expected it to be as great as it has been and to go as well as it has. Um, so whenever you have the opportunity to to partner with you know, an organization or in this case, a, a restaurant that you're really passionate, bit, passionate, not only about the food, but the people and the culture there. Yep. Um, and they're really passionate about what we're doing and passionate about the Orlando magic and the city of Orlando. It's just a match made in heaven. So yep. really happy to be partnering with Jam Hot Chicken. Kevin, one thing I wanted to bring up before we start talking about, you know, patrons, and then we'll get into our, our conversation with Kendra Douglas. Right now, the Paris Olympic MVP ladder, okay? I just saw that. Number one is LeBron James. Number two is Nikola Jokic. Number three is Dennis Schroeder, Kevin Durant, and then Franz Wagner is sitting there at five. I feel a, a certain type of way about Dennis Schroeder being at three, Franz Wagner being at five. Right now, out of the players remaining in the tournament, Franz Wagner is the leading scorer of this entire tournament. And is doing so just as efficiently as Dennis Schroeder is 
while also being a bigger part of like the defensive identity of this Germany team. I know that Dennis Schroeder won the was it I think he won the MVP ter- MVP of the tournament last year in the World Cup and I think because of that they kind of gave the MVP of the final game to Franz and I believe Dennis won the MVP of the tournament if I'm not mistaken it seems like some of that bias is like carrying over into the Olympics if you're watching these games in the Olympics I just don't understand how you think Dennis Schroeder is more valuable to that team than Franz Wagner that's really interesting to me it's it's the name that's what it's People know the name Dennis Schroeder. He's been around the league longer. And so they just say, oh, Germany's doing well. Must be the guy that we know. Dennis Schroeder. While Franz over there, just like in Orlando, is an unheralded player who contributes to winning. And and especially with Germany, is leading them in a lot of ways to winning. And so I I think Franz might be you know somewhat used to it, but... I think Franz may see some of this stuff. At the very least, his family probably does. You know, scrolling the internet, it's been a thing for a while. Um, but hey, whatever fuel he needs, let's let's see him go out there against France on thir- well today Thursday, and you know try and try and flip the script there a little bit. Because yeah, I I I think that's ridiculous that he's behind Dennis Schroeder. If you've watched any of, or all the games, like I've watched three and a half games, I'll, I'll be honest. But uh, yeah, I mean it's it's a no brainer to me. But anyway. Not surprised, but hopefully uh, Franz can change that narrative here soon. Franz like has a legitimate shot to end up with the most points scored in this tournament. And then when you start talking about like you know points per game out of guys who will play, you know at at least you know uh, five or six games, yeah. Because at this point, if they lose to France, they'll have the ability to to play in the the medal round. So they'll for sh- he'll for sure play at least two more games in the tournament here. So he he's got a chance to lead this entire tournament in scoring and also like has a non-zero chance to be the MVP of this tournament. If cuz I I think last year in either that semifinal or that final round now, he was coming off of that ankle injury missed a few games in the World Cup last year, so it made sense that Dennis Schroeder was the MVP of the tournament. Um but Franz obviously didn't look completely healthy when he came back cuz he probably wasn't completely healthy. But if he's able to to stay healthy through these last couple of games, I don't know that any of us would have picked Franz to to p- potentially lead the entire tournament in scoring and also be the MVP of the Olympic tournament, you know, a couple of weeks ago. So really exciting for our guy Franz. But now let's take a moment to talk about our Patreon. So our Patreon is the community where our patrons help financially support the show. We literally could not do the show twice a week, each and every week. And do things like the post game lies and the six fan show and you know the watch parties, all that kind of stuff. If it were not for our patrons, if you would like to partner with the show and help financially support us, you can find us at patreon.com slash the six man show. Whenever we have brand new patrons, we give them a very special shout out and we give our Hall of Fame and Elite Tier patrons a shout out each and every episode. So let's go ahead and shout out those patrons by starting with the court cousins. Drew Gooden, Armin, Carson Tulo, Ellis, Jonathan Borges, Normal Magic Player History, Gabe Gaines, Michael Martin, Jamel Miller, Michael Salapong, Donkey Punch Day, Paolo and Francis Warren, Pierre A, Dylan Holden, Mr. Mikey, Eduardo Sanchez, Dan Will, Bobby Skinner, Godi93, Teddy Silvia, Dalek Lopez, Fuchsia, Bill Fulton, Emin Lagone, Jose Squealing, Kayla Pete, Cannibalism Time, Mr. TV, ESPN Really Sucks, Gear95, Shred, Junior Bruce, Half Recon, Shahin177, Bobby the Don, Himlo Ben Himro, R Improv 221, Ray Pastrana, Magic Kid 714, Mysterious Mosley, Irish Magic Mike, Austin Lampy, Random Hustle, Only Franz, Maria, Keith Walls, Fritz, Bruv Sal, Case and Green, Santi Leon, Kane Eckler, The Distract, Chansu, Tom Gadsden, Dead Air, Richard Tuttle, Jeremiah Quintero, Magic Wire, Debo 1980, Magic Matt, Michael Thompson, Mama Richmond, Next Snappa, What's Up Playoffs 2024, Dylan Fay, David Duffy, Smith, Sheik, Ship Sinks, Bueno Time, Stantino 1995, Suggs Mugs, Daniel Anderson, Barry McElcanny, and Jose Marrero. A big thank you to all of our patrons. You can find us at patreon.com slash the six man show. And now without further ado, let's get to our conversation with Bally sports, Florida sideline reporter for the Orlando magic, our friend Kendra Douglas. And now magic fans, we are joined by a very special guest making her second appearance (laughs) on the six man show here and gearing up for her second season with the Orlando magic sideline reporter for the Orlando magic and Bally sports, Florida, Kendra Douglas. Kendra, welcome back. Thanks for joining us. How are you and 
How's your summer been? Hi guys, thank you for having me. And um, my summer has been great. It's been wonderful to kind of relax a little bit, working hard on some things and just gearing up for the upcoming season, which I'm looking forward to. I feel like every time I see like Franz and Mo play, I'm like, we're so close, we're so close. So yeah, no, I'm excited for the upcoming season. That Yeah, what a first season for you. Like, I don't know <laughs> if you're like maybe the good luck charm of Magic Basketball, because I mean, obviously you've been in Orlando before this season, right? So you are familiar with the Magic's past, but like not great the last few years. Last year was a little bit better. And then all of a sudden you show up and now we're in 47 games. We go to the playoffs and blah, 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 blah. But yeah, that must have been a pretty wild first year. Obviously not just first year, you know, you know, with the Magic, but first year with a, a professional team in general. Like what was that experience like? Like being with a team from start to finish, obviously you've covered sports, but you know, mm -hmm. you were kind of a jack of all trades covering all sorts of things for local news what was it like being in the trenches with one team for such a long time and it be such a special season to cover well let me tell you i have been super lucky in my career so when i first started out and i worked in kansas i covered the chiefs in their first run and that was mahomes like mvp season then we also went to the super bowl then i came here and then we covered tom brady going to the super bowl so i've been super super lucky to cover some pretty amazing teams and i was super excited to cover the magic and just to see how the run has been so far and i think you know the difference it's it's like the difference from covering all those sports is you know you you have to know the teams but you don't really know them in depth and so covering just the magic knowing the team in depth really understanding and learning them bonding connections all of it it's just been such a great feeling i love it here um it's amazing everyone's super great everyone works really hard i think with the travel schedule too, you really gain a lot more respect for these players, especially when it comes to those back-to-back -back games. I mean, like one of our back-to-backs was like Houston and Milwaukee. And I'm like, how are you, how are y'all functioning? <laughs> yeah. so like, how, like, how do you, how do you function? I mean, yeah, you know, they, they get paid to do this, but at the same time, it's still a lot on your body. And I'm just going on TV and I'm dead. And I'm like, they have to go play. And I'm like, how are they not dead? <laughs> so I think it was, you know, it's so cool to kind of have a better understanding of the players, have a better understanding of this team and just to see them and how much they bond it. When you hear them say that they really are like a big family, it's a brotherhood. They really bond. They really mean it. Like it, it's true. Like they really do hang out with each other. They really do bond. And I'm just looking forward to, you know, this upcoming season, especially with the new additions and everything that we're doing and, um, it's going to be a good one. <laughs> so being as how this was your, your first season, like you're really covering like an NBA team full time and, and your first season with the magic apart from the travel, which everybody knows, well, maybe not everybody knows, but it's incredibly grueling, it right? Is. Like we, we, we will talk a little bit about our trip to Charlotte in a bit. Yeah. Um, but we took a road trip to, to Charlotte this past season. It was just like a quick 24 hour turnaround. And when I got home, I know I was completely exhausted. So yeah. to think that a lot of times you guys are in one city one night and then halfway across the country the next and, and another, and those guys are playing. But apart from the travel, what do you think was like one of the, the biggest challenges for you in your first season? Oh my God, I think that was my biggest challenge. Um, uh, no, I think, um, I think just really understanding really finding my groove when it came to you know how i wanted to go about asking questions how i wanted to go about reporting things to learn things to understand about the guys like feeling comfortable to talk with them a little bit more about like questions that i don't really want to go to the scrum <laughs> and you know and and ask i want like to find my own stories so i think that was my biggest challenge is making sure that i can still set myself apart from what other people are reporting about and what other people are saying and doing. And I think I, I think I was able to do that a lot with, you know, really finding, you know, heartwarming stories, but I definitely want to improve on that next season. I think it was just a challenge. Oh, I think the biggest challenge I have is like when it's those neck and neck games and you're like, all right, basically you think you have an idea of who you're going to interview, but if it's the game winner, you have to just revert everything and you're just going straight to that game winner. So like majority of the time you knew it was going to be Paolo, but for all we knew, it could have been like Joe, you know, and, and Joe might've just not even played that whole game, but just came in to shoot that shot. And you're just like, 
zero three points today but like you got the game winner <laughs> you know like that kind of mindset and so i think that was something that i kind of had to like think about and you know what i'll say is that this group does a great job at communicating so i'm in a group text message with like my boss and like the communication staff and we're going back and forth and we're talking about everything and we're saying who's this and who's that and who you should talk to and this and that so it really is a well-oiled machine. It's just something I think I had to like get into a groove of and understand it. And I think I genuinely got into the groove like after All Star, and then I was like, okay, I'm good. Like I can do this. So um, it was just that was probably my biggest learning lesson. Yeah, I can. I really can't imagine like go. It's basically zero to one hundred, right? Like you're, yeah. you're uh, when you come to this job, you're spending the summer, whatever, like. They tell you what it's going to be like, and you, you may try to practice things in your head, but there's no real way to practice it until you just go. And then once you go, there's no ramp up. Like you're like mm -hmm. right into the the grind of the NBA season. So I can't imagine that. That doesn't surprise me. That it takes months to really get into the groove. Um, I'm yeah. trying to remember before you came to the Magic, you were with Wesh, right? Is that who you were with? Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. WESH. So uh, I just want to make sure I get the right outlet. You know, some people can be offended if I, you know, said right. WKMG, yeah. or, you know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, so you've been obviously, like we said, in Central Florida for a while now. Uh, obviously, covering the team is a little bit different. But since you have been around, how would you feel like this past season, the vibes around Central Florida, the energy around Central Florida, around the Magic has been different? Like, have you sensed that? I know it oh, may yeah. be difficult, you know, coming back and forth, you know, on the road, in town. But have you been able to sense like the, the difference that this Magic team especially made like in Central Florida? Oh, without a doubt. When I came, it was COVID first off. So mm. like it was kind of already going through that. And you're you're dealing with a team that had also made some drastic changes as well. And then we get rid of Vooch and then, you know, all, all these things. So you 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 had, I think, fans who were just wondering, like, when will it be our turn? Like finally, like when will it be our turn to just like say this is our team? Yep. So I can definitely feel the difference from my first year living in Orlando to now. Um, there are always Magic fans. I mean, you guys have always been Magic fans, and I think you guys have been cheering for them. But I think you too have probably also felt like I just want to feel like we're you have no idea. <laughs> like we're 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 in it to win it, and I think you're seeing that now. So. It's been beautiful. It really has been beautiful to kind of just see um, that growth. And I remember, I think I remember before, like when I was working at WESH, I had asked Jeff Weltman a question about like, are you tired of, you know, just the whole like rebuilding? <laughs> like, like, you know, like what, like, what are we like, what are you guys doing? And I remember he answered like, yeah, I don't want to be in that position anymore. You know, he doesn't want to do that. But I think it's all part of the process. And I think you're seeing the process now. You're seeing that they are doing such a good job of development, like and just developing their young guys, but adding key weapons and adding key pieces. So I think now more than ever, it's just such a great time to be a Magic fan. And I think bring on all the bandwagon people. Bring them. Like we're we're we're, we're inviting you in right now. Coming right. I'm saying it right here. We're inviting you in now. <laughs> like, That's right. Get on, get on now, because once things take off, we're gonna all be look at you differently. So <laughs> come in now. Has, has your like impression of Magic fans like changed like over the course of the last year since joining the team? Like, what has your experience been with Magic fans this year? Mm. I, a lot of them have been really open. A lot of them, I think, have been really sweet and you know super nice to me. Um, I think that was the one thing that I didn't know if it was going to be like an inviting situation just because it's like I'm new, but everyone was super inviting. I've had people like, I, one thing I really wish people would do is just like say, Hey, Kendra real fast and then take a photo. I've had people mm. take photos of me and I'm like the glimpse, the side, like they're not getting my good angles. But <laughs> other, than that, other than that, it's been great. Like everyone's been super nice. Um, and I think what I like is when families come up to me and they say things like, like there's this one magic fan, his daughter's, he didn't, before he even told me how old his daughter was, he just came over to me and he was like, my daughter's going to take your job one day. And I was like, okay, smile. Oh. <laughs> and then he tells me like his daughter's like eight years old. And I'm like, Aww. oh, okay. Like 
take my job one day. And so he would always bring her to games. And then she became someone that I just would always give a high five to or give a hug to and speak to. And I would even tell her, I'm like, you're going to take my job one day. It was just the cutest thing. So I think when Magic fans have just really opened like the door and like open their arms to welcome me, it's been great. And I'm just super appreciative of them. But yeah, they, they've been really nice to me. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Yeah. You never know on the internet, especially like that, you know, yeah. we love all magic fans, but there are some, you know, we love you all, but there are some, you know, wacky ones out there, but I'm glad to hear maybe they've yeah. you know, stayed away from you for the most part. I've seen, I've seen some wacky stuff before and I've just yeah. been kind of like, ignore it. Don't let it, don't <laughs> let have it. To. You know, Cause yeah. some of these magic fans are um, interesting. That's right. <laughs> so, yes, they are. Yeah. That's a yeah. great way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> Some of those magic fans are our Patreon, you know, members, which is awesome. They're our patrons, and we ask some of them. We let them know, hey, Kendra's coming on the show. Got any questions for Kendra? A couple of these came from them. Uh, this was such a special year, right? We talked about so many highlights. What's like a moment or two for you that stands out? Maybe it's something with the team. Maybe it's something personally, you know, with the travelers, you know, whatever it could be. Like, are there one or two moments for you that were like, wow, those are like the best moments for me this season? Hands down, my favorite moment ever, and I literally have talked about this before, was the Denver game, just because mm. everyone was so sick, and I was sick. We all were sick. We all were sick. Wow. <laughs> Let me know. We all were dead. And just, like, the heart of that game and, like, the hustle of that game. And I remember at one point I was waiting for Paolo to come over, and I just saw Coach Mosley. Like, he had friends there, and he just, like, was running around looking for them because he wanted to see them. And it just was, like, this feeling of, like, you did that. Like, you really helped, like, get these guys to dig deep and find a way to get the win. That probably, hands down, is one of my favorite games just because, I mean, we were on a three-game road trip. No, yeah, three-game because that was the Sacramento one. So that was right. – literally like what double triple double overtime, overtime. Yeah, yeah. double overtime Brutal. sacramento one that's when we start getting sick then we the, before that it was golden state and then sacramento and then either way it was one or the other either way you're just starting to feel like everything wear on you and i just remember thinking like okay denver just like we like you have the opportunity like this is it like this is the moment you have to dig deep and i just think seeing those guys dig deep and really just pull out the win was probably one of my all-time favorite moments of the season. I mean, of course, going to playoffs was amazing, but I think that game, you just saw the heart and you just saw that it could really be anybody's game. Like anyone, any of those guys could help this team get a win. And I think that's what really like shows the depth of this team is that the fact that any of these guys <laughs> can help get that win. So that probably is my favorite. Outside, I will say outside of this, my favorite part has been just welcoming my family into like the magic community and like um, having my parents come and like come to games or like see me in action. And like Charlotte was probably my biggest thing. Like we, uh, my family's from that area. And so um, they had gotten literally, I think like 50 family members or like 60. It was insane. It was wild. It was so wild. Like they had gotten like, I want to say 50 plus family members to come to the game. And then they all waited for me after. And it was just like a big reunion. And it just, I think it meant a lot to me in that moment, just because I've been in this business for a while. And I feel like this is somewhere where I've really like loved and grown. And I didn't know how long I'd be in in Orlando after WESH. And so to be here longer, it feels right. And so it was really nice to have them there. So those are probably my two favorite moments. You know, you mentioned the Charlotte game. Jonathan and I were at one of the Charlotte games. Yeah. This may I, you may not remember this. I don't know if you remember this. So I do. I this, said hi. Pretty well, sure. That, yeah, that. But there's a specific thing that happened at that game, to oh, where I think it would must have been like your pregame hit, where you're like right before the tip off and you're there. You're there baseline. Do you remember Jay when Cole? Jay Cole? Yes. Yes. When Jay Cole like brushed by you to get to his seat, we all saw your face go like. <laughs> It was the funniest thing ever. It was awesome. It feels very own North. Well, because it's like I'm from North Carolina, right, and so right. like growing up, he was just like the guy you listen to. Like you just do. Like you don't do. Like there's no like you do not talk bad about J Cole. And so when I saw him walk by, I look at Tony and I was like, Yeah. <laughs> Like, Tony had the same face, as a I matter know. of fact. Yeah, I think we just weren't expecting it. Like, and it's yeah. funny too because it's like 
we're going to places like LA and we're going to like all these other insane places where you see like stars and celebrities all the time. And like, I'm playing, we're playing against guys who are like insane. And I don't know. I think it was because the North Carolina girl in me was like, that is him. <laughs> yeah. We all did the same thing. Cause I like, I knew he was like, what is he part owner, majority, whatever owner yeah. of the Hornets. Yeah. And, but I just never put the two and two together until I saw him come out of the tunnel. I was like, guys, 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 he's right now. You know, and so I freaked <laughs> out. On TV. How am I supposed to go on TV right now? And this man, uh, literally, yep. the guy who got me through like high school, college, life is right here. <laughs> yep. And y'all, for people watching, like J. Cole literally like brushed shoulders with Kendra. Like she was that close to his seat. Like it was, it was pretty awesome. Anyway, yeah, I had to mention yeah. that because that was pretty cool to see. It was funny. It was funny. I was like, act like you've been here before, Kendra. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, Get it together. <laughs> no, that that was awesome, and and so glad to hear that. You know, your your family's been welcomed into the the Magic family as well. You mentioned, you know, the this isn't one of our our Patreon questions. This is a question that I have now that you you talked about the the game when everybody was sick. Yeah, the the, the moment that I thought maybe you were going to say was the uh, Palos game winner against Detroit when he was oh, incredibly yeah. sick, gets super emotional after the game. You know, in in your interview with him, what was that like? my heart was pounding like crazy only because like one we had seen it two people were questioning it like questioning that play so it was kind of like okay like it's what's gonna happen so then when you realize you won i'm like okay perfect this is gonna be a regular thing but then i noticed that he was taking a while to get over here so i was just kind of like okay well we're just gonna wait <laughs> and so that's and i didn't know like i didn't know he was he was feeling that way the thing that people don't get is like the mics you have, their, their intention is to pick up everything around you. Like that's literally in, the intention of that microphone because one, the height and just yeah. everything. So it was like when he dropped the first F-bomb, I was like, oh no. <laughs> but it was just like, but I was trying my hardest to move the mic because I'm like, this could literally be such a moment. Like this could be such a great moment for him just to like show how emotional he was. So I tried my hardest to just kind of like think about if this is your last question, what is it going to be? And that was when I think I asked him, like, describe your feelings right now, because I can tell him like I can tell right now that we're going to have to cut this off. <laughs> but, you know, let's let's try to get some type of feeling from him, because this has to be a lot that is weighed on him because he was pretty sick. He was pretty sick going into that whole road trip. And he just like really just dug deep too to kind of like help this team out. And um, the second F-bomb, I'm like, yeah, we're going to have to wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, I want my job. You want your job. Let's keep it going. <laughs> and oh so it was, that was probably, yeah, that's high on the list too. Um, I think, Cause I never, I didn't even, I didn't realize, like I had no idea what I was walking into. I was just waiting. And so then to see him be emotional, I'm like, all right, Kendra lock in, like literally either he's going to answer questions or he's not. So get the questions in that are really going to be most impactful. And like, really just kind of like, you know, he can answer, like, not just like, let's go through the walk me through. Like, that's yeah. not what you want to hear right now. Like we know we saw it. Like, what is your feeling? What are you feeling at this moment right now? Those are the questions that I feel like would, you know, you want to hear the fans want to hear because you see him so visibly like emotional. So it was it that was a moment to remember. And I'm um, really happy we did get through that interview because I think it also showed a different side of Paolo. Um, but yeah, no, the F-bombs kind of like <laughs> kind of wrapped up that one. <laughs> I, I thought you did a, a great job. And like, I, I do think, you know, 20 years from now, like that is one of the like more iconic Orlando mm -hmm. Magic, like post game interviews. Like we'll look back on that 15, 20 years from now. Without a doubt. And I kind of am happy that like low key, I might get in trouble for this. I'm kind of happy the real version is out because I really feel like, you know, you're right. Like we're going to want to look at that real version one day and be like, oh my God, like this is just this, like this really embodies like the player and the, just the emotion he has for just this team and what he wants to do for this team and how much he's willing to give for this team. So yeah, I, that I kind of was like, can I have at least that clip? Like for my own self, you know, yeah. like, just be like, dang, like that was insane. But yeah, no, we do have the clean version out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, both of them. Yeah, I remember, you know, we do a a a show live on YouTube after after Magic Games, 
And I remember getting, I hosted that night. I got so fired up because I, I remember literally saying, when is the last time we had an Orlando yeah. Magic player get emotional mm -hmm. about playing for this team, about playing for their for their teammates, about whatever? Like, it just, it hadn't happened in so long. You know, obviously we've had some down years before this era. And so like all Magic fans, so like kudos to you for just opening that up and letting Paolo just be him. Yeah. No matter what came out of his mouth, which was awesome. Uh, but yeah, that that really definitely like resonated with Magic fans for sure and gave us something to hang on to. And like like Jonathan said, that's going to be a moment for Paolo's career forever. As he continues his ascent, that's yeah. definitely going to be a special, special moment. Oh, uh, this is another question from our patrons. We obviously see you in front of the camera, 82 games, playoffs, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But we all know there's stuff that happens behind the scenes. You know, maybe things go right, things go wrong, things that are funny. You had yeah. a lot of experience this season. Are there any like behind the scenes, funny stories, serious stories? I don't know. Anything kind of crazy that happened behind the scenes this season? I can give you one because I, I was like walking right into it. So it was um, it was DC. It was the DC game. And it, it was the one where like we went into the half like down and everyone was kind of like, oh, what? Yeah. Um, and so um, that was the one where coach didn't go over any plays. He just literally kind of like had like, that heart to heart with them and like was just like y'all gotta dig deep and so i i don't even know where how why i was back in the like i i think i was walking back do i have a hit before i think okay i now i remember i have a hit before like just to talk to a coach so i'm walking down these stairs and i just see like um coach and brett like literally like coming out the hallway and coach is running out of the tunnel, like running like a thousand miles per hour. And I was like, what did I just see? And like, they were just laughing and having a good time and joking. And I think that showed like the funny side of them. And that was probably like one of the behind the scenes things that I was just like, what just happened? Are we on serious? But then we <laughs> came back and like dominated. And it was, I think that like one thing that you'll see with this team is like, when you talk about like behind the scenes stuff, they're just funny. Like, they're just, like, really funny. I think also another behind-the-scenes thing is, like, um, I have a tendency to go over my notes out loud. And, like, sometimes it might look like I'm talking to myself. And that's just what it is. So there used to be this thing where, like, Joe and our other photographer named Houston would, like, look at, would find times to stare at me and make fun of me and, like, call me crazy. And so, like, <laughs> I could feel it. Like, I would be looking, and I'm like, I know they're looking at me and I'd find them and they would literally just be like staring like you're crazy like who talks to themselves and I'm just like and you know Joe is gonna like make fun of you too so like he it just was a thing so that was like the thing throughout the season was making fun of me whenever I was like looking at my notes trying to like like just memorize certain things and like look at certain things and for me like saying it out loud like helps so I think that was another one that was kind of like Leave me alone, guys. I'm trying. <laughs> you you got to have fun, you know, throughout yeah, the regular season. It, it's such a grind for you all. You know, obviously it is for the players, but you all are just going from like city to city, trying to stay sane, trying to get through the season. So you, you, mm -hmm. you definitely got to have uh, some 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 fun with the with the with the traveling party for sure. Last question that we have uh, from our, our patrons, Kendra, was there any like difference in your preparation for the playoffs as opposed to the regular season? Like, oh, obviously, yeah. the stakes are higher for everybody. Like, yeah. was there anything different about the way that you prepared for those games? Um, I think I think it was more so like we just had more on our plate and we just kind of had a lot more, you know, things we wanted to do. And like um, it, it was just getting I think it was just more fine tuning the details. Like we just had more things, more like hits and more just kind of like make sure we hit this, make sure we do that. Like make sure you check and see this family. That's one thing that I think I've really worked hard on is making sure I know what families are, are, are in the area um, because I think that's important. So like, for example, even though we're talking about playoffs, but for example, when Cole Anthony's grandmother was in the Detroit game, I was like, that's important. We need to like make that a thing. So going into playoffs, I was like, it's important. We make it a thing of who's all here. And I think Franz and Mo had like all his best friends there. Um, that came from Germany to like go to like the uh, one of the games in Cleveland. And I like made sure that, you know, our broadcasting people knew about that too. Like, hey, they're right there. They're, they're going to be there the whole night. His mom and dad came, their mom and dad came too. So um, it was a lot, I think, of preparation when it came to, and then we, we took the whole team on the road. So it was like Coach Brian Hill and, you know, Dante were with us too. So we just did 
a lot more when it came to just preparing for that. We just had a lot more hits. We wanted to make it the best we could just because we were like, we don't know what's going to happen. So you always want to treat every like broadcast as it's going to be the last one. Um, so yeah, I think that the preparation just was more like more intense, more just intense of like more content, more interviews, more stories, more. And that's hard when you get to like the end. And I'm like, 82 games. What else do you want us to talk about with these guys? Like what shoes, the the shoelaces at this point, like, you know, like it's challenging. So um, that was, I think part of, you know, working together with this group, we, they really are a team like, and I'm not just saying the team team, but I'm saying our broadcast team. I am so lucky to be working with like coach Hill, Dante, JT and David and all them like, so so lucky like i have had moments where i'm like i don't know what i'm talking about and then like dante would be like it's okay let's talk about it and i'm like okay now i do um so to be on a group that's like willing to help you constantly is amazing and i'm just like so lucky under this t-shirt i have my copaya shirt on so like i'm really like i know right um (laughs) but yeah it's it's a great it's a great team and we just worked so hard this season they're they are the best like we've been able to have all of them on the show and obviously interact with them over the years. I mean, they are what I just love about them is like the people they are on TV, the people they are in real life, like they are just the most genuine group of people. So that's awesome. And not surprising to hear that they, you know, welcomed you in so much. One of the things that they do that they talk about a lot when, because obviously travel all over the place, they talk about their favorite cities, their favorite arenas, their favorite restaurants at all these different places. I'm sure all the places have blurred together for you, but do you have a favorite place that you went this year, whether it was the city, whether it was a restaurant, favorite arena? Like, did you have a spot that you went this year and you're like, wow, I can't wait till next year to go back to that place? Chicago. Yeah? That place. We were there for like three days, four days. Oh, the best. But if you ever talk to JT or David Steele or even Dante again, you have to ask them, what is your favorite desk? And which hotel is your favorite desk? Okay. They'll get it. They'll understand it. <laughs> they'll understand it. You have like you have to remember this. And then you have to be like Kendra wanted us to ask. Like if you if you do get the chance to talk to them, they like it's it was it became our thing at the end of the year because we had these meetings all the time. And so uh, it became a thing where we were like, Do you like your setup? How, let's complain about the setup. <laughs> Does this setup not work for you? And so I think one day I was like, Cleveland, oddly enough, had the best setup. I was like, I literally, this was the best one. Don't want to go back anymore, but right. this was our best setup. Um, so that that's like, if you ever talk to one of them, you have to ask them about their favorite desk setup. That's like our, that's like our thing. Um, yeah, we will, we will have all those guys on before the season starts. And so we will you definitely have, have to. Have, have it's to it's like a funny that. thing. Like JT, I think started it. And then we just kept going and we just kept going and we would just complain and we complained. And so like we, it was just like our thing, but yeah, Chicago was probably my favorite place. Um, and then I was really surprised about, um, Minnesota and like in Minneapolis, I was like, Oh, this is cool. So I, I like them too. So they're high on the list too. Um, Everywhere else, yeah, I think, I think, Cle- but I think Chicago takes the cake. Like, Chicago was the place. I cannot wait to go back. I cannot, I cannot wait. I love it there. It's so much fun. Yeah, that's, that's my favorite one. Awesome. Last thing that we'll ask you here, Kendra, before we wrap up with you, what are you most excited for with this upcoming Magic season? Um, Gosh, I think just like, just seeing how the guys just continue on from what they were doing this past season. I think that a lot of them are working so hard individually. Um, and then also just kind of like, sorry, this is an, an alarm just kind of like set off. I don't know if you can hear it. But, um, it's going to go off in a minute. There we go. Um, I think just like seeing how the guys work so hard in the off season just now and what they're looking forward to going into this season. Um, there's so many good things to talk about with this team. And I think it's just growing. I think also I'm excited to see what Tristan De Silva does. I think that's going to be fun. I'm excited to see what KCP does. I think defensively that's going to be fun. Um, I think that when I watched, you know, the summer league and seeing how much AB and Jed Howard grew 
and just, you know, how much they've like spent a lot of time in Orlando growing. I think that's going to be fun to watch too. I think there's just going to be so many storylines to just keep track of. You're not going to know what to keep track of because I think everyone's going to have a great season. I think Powell's going to continue to dominate. I think Franz is going to have a great season. I've been shook by Franz and the way he has played, especially when they first played Team USA and now that he's in the Olympics and what he's done. One thing that we talked about a lot with him, just like me asking questions, is he was just like, you know, the leadership thing is something where he had to grow in. And so I think he's just doing such a good job and like really finding his groove and finding like ways to grow. And I'm super excited to see like how he does that this season too with this team. So I'm excited. I'm ready. I'm ready for the the uh, schedule to come out. I'm ready for September 30th. I'm ready for all of it. I'm ready for everything. Yeah. I know Jonathan said last thing, but I, I almost forgot. I had to mention another highlight of the year. You remember the Bow Outlaw socks? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So our friends at Rock and one of the sponsors of the show, you know, last year to start the season, we had Bo on the show and they made these socks and Kendra was like, I need those. Let me get those. Yeah. So we sent them to Kendra and then you, it was at the gym, right? Like you showed up yeah. at the gym and you go to the same gym as Bo. Mm -hmm. You walked in wearing his socks and I still remember the reaction. I know that was probably pretty fun too. It was funny because like Bo has been like, Bo was somebody. So before I even came to Orlando Magic, Bo, I met Bo at our gym and he was someone who literally just kind of like took me in as like his like second daughter. He has all boys, so he doesn't have girls. So like he took me in as like his kid. And I remember actually when I introduced my parents to him too, he was just like, I'm taking care of her. I'm making sure she's good. Everything is fine. Like she's living her best life and they became really cool. So it's just been nice to kind of have Bo like around and he's just a good energy. He's a good person. And yeah, those socks were hilarious. He was just like, how did you even get those? And I was like, I can't tell my sources. Like what? Yeah. Like, <laughs> they literally made like three pairs of those and you have one of them, which is I so do. funny. That's amazing. I know. I know. It's funny, but no, he it's, it's great to have him and guys like Nick around because they bring so much energy to the organization. They do so much for the organization as well. So no, it, it was funny. That was a great moment. That was like, that was like my, like, I'm still new, but like, Hey, I'm here moments. Yeah. Shout out to our friends over at, uh, at Rockham for, for helping make that happen. And yeah, thank you again to you, Kendra, for, for taking the time, jumping on with us. Always a lot of fun. We look forward to seeing Kendra Douglas in year two on the sidelines for the Orlando Magic. Um, if you could just really quickly just let our listeners know where they can find you. You can find me on Instagram at Kendra.Douglas and then on Twitter or X at Kendra underscore Twitter, Melinda. Yeah. I know it's still, still Twitter, Twitter in my mind. At Kendra underscore Melinda, M-E-L-I-N-D-A. So yeah, connect with me and follow me and just, you know, I want to connect with Magic fans all the time. Awesome. We love it, Kendra. Thanks so much for joining the show. Thank you. Once again, a big thank you to our friend Kendra Douglas for joining the show. Always great to talk to Kendra. Brings such a, a level of insight and like a, a level of experience. Like no one is closer to the team than Kendra. So whenever we have the ability to have her on the show, always a good time and appreciate her taking the time. Yeah, she's she's great. Just love the energy, the passion for the job. Um, I love that, you know, she recognizes you know, she's, she's obviously new in this role and, you know, stepping into a role with a team that we all love. I don't just mean the Magic. I mean, that broadcast team is so beloved by Magic fans. They've been there forever. You know, David Steele, obviously from the beginning, JT in various capacities with the organization for a long time, Dante for many, many, many years. And so for Kendra to be able to slot in there seamlessly, it's been awesome. Been really cool to have her, you know, on those broadcasts and looking forward to seeing her again in her second year. All right, I think that is going to do it for this one, Kevin, unless you have something else. Uh, if it is early enough in the day and Germany versus France has not started yet, find a TV, a screen. Somehow, you have to watch that game. I think it's going to be a good one. France is definitely going to be looking for a get back after the loss that they suffered to Germany last week. And uh, I know Germany is looking to repeat as the true, I guess, world champions, as they say. Yeah, and don't underestimate. This is in France, folks. That crowd Thursday is going to be bonkers. And so I'm going to be rooting that Germany, you know, steps on things early. And so hopefully this game is put away, maybe halftime, third quarter. It'd be awesome if they could get a nice big lead. Because if it's down to the wire and that crowd's going crazy in the fourth quarter and stuff, that's going to be stressful. But either way, I'm here for it. It'll be fun. Yeah, you don't want to see Germany get off to the start that they had against France. That that game was just like a lot of like Greek or 
not France, Greece. Greece I yeah. keep going back to that. But Greece's defense in the first half of that game, like they were energized, they were really up for that game, looked really solid and, and started to wane in that second half. But Germany just had a lot of bad shots early in that game. And you want to see them get off to a better start against France because France is definitely going to be looking to get out to a better start than they did last time these two teams played so looking forward to that again a big thank you to kendra douglas for joining the show that is going to do it for this one for kevin tucker this is jonathan osborne you all have been listening to the six man show and we will catch you guys next time see ya thanks for listening to the sixth man show be sure to subscribe on itunes and spotify to get new episodes downloaded directly to your phone If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to give us a five-star rating and a review. It helps out the show a lot. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Six Man Show. We'll catch you guys next time. Go Magic!